Hey there, welcome back, Marius here, and today we have Forges Frontier. After this video, you will learn and know exactly how to survive in hardest difficulty and more specifically, how to get food. So this video will be mostly about and everything about food because game really puts emphasizes on it. So uh, why and what is the hardest difficulty? Those three settings you choose, the difficulty, that's nothing, that's child's play. What makes real difficult this map is if you choose Arid Highlands, you can read that's um, map difficulty, the highest, and this is what I mean by hardest difficulty. There is no fertile land. Depends on the seed. There are some seeds where I saw there is no water as well, extra difficult. And yeah, there are some areas where it's a little bit fertility, but a little bit and small areas, but mostly whole map is just like this and just on top of that this map you're seeing right now is small there is nothing basically i have already explored everything so instead this is the difficult so let's jump right to the food point and one by one i will discuss and give you all the tips and tricks how you can get yeah these are the highest level currently in the game this is the higher level so anything and everything is possible if you know how to so I will go, sorry, through uh, all the food production buildings and discuss. So, in this hardest difficulty, uh, Hunter's Cabin is absolutely still amazing, especially if you manage to find, I'm showing this deer sighted, six deer, actually there are seven, one is hunted down, and another pack of deer. Why deer? Because they don't run away, they don't attack, they are seven, they are quite, they stay close to this location, so they are easy to hunt they, and they regrow. So what I have is two pack of hunters, you want them approximately this, you see this distance? It's not next to it. If you place it next to it, your hunters will hunt down all seven of them. Once you kill all of the pack, that pack is gone. Once it's zero, it's gone. It might respawn somewhere else on the map, but you don't want that chance if that respawn point is too far away. So, don't kill your golden, the goose that lays your golden eggs. This is absolutely perfect distance. Uh, they are ramping up the production. This one is poorly done, but they are gathering about three, 250 up to 300 meat constantly, all the time. Deers are respawning and you get pelts and uh, this tallow as well. And if you see this number, this number goes down to four, three, think to change something, remove one of the hunters, place them somewhere else, don't kill that thing, right? And it will be for whole, through whole game, just you can get uh, nice resource uh, from there. Next point is Forger Shack. It's quite simple. In this map, believe it or not, there is absolutely, I'll go away further, there's nothing to collect. There are no eggs, there are no shrooms, there are no blueberries, no berries at all, no herbs, no nothing. In this map, that building is absolutely pointless. You need to build one so you are able to unlock and get basket maker. Other than that, nothing to collect. I mentioned this is the hardest difficulty, right? I'm not joking. So, next up we have a fish, fishing shack. You know I mentioned how I don't like fishing, and if you manage to get the map seed, randomly generated map, where you actually have water, that's a quite good win, especially in the beginning. Why? Because, you know, you can place, especially in these areas, where you manage to get a lot of those fishing spots and you see 210 percent uh this this uh what it's called bonus productivity 160 eh, not so great but 200 quite good and the best part is uh it ramps up production about 250 ish as well so it's not that bad especially in the beginning now i can easily demolish them i don't need them I'll show you all the things you need to know. And the still problem is the, uh, the same I mentioned in another video. 
if the fish, and yes, the fish can run out. For some whatever reason, it can run out. So be aware of that. Next up, we have, of course, small house. You have to make the food so it stays longer. No problem there. But this is the real kicker. Two kicker things about the fields. Remember I said, and I mean by that, the fertility is, look at my fields, zero, zero, zero. All the fields, no fertility at all. So how can you survive? Three, I think three key ingredients is, yeah, three, I'll go with three. I can throw in the fourth, I'll explain. This is basically the core about the video. How to get food. First off, first point about the crop fields. You have to make a mixed bag of things. I'll show you and teach you how to not, well, if you're doing something wrong, let me find some field where I'm doing something wrong, which is, as you can see, impossible because I'm so great. <laughs> okay, but I'm trying to look, there. there is some diseases. When there is a disease, mouse override, and it will say uh, what type of um, these things affects. That means you need to get rid of the fields. For example, I know there is a disease that affects beans, uh, peas, carrots, and buckwheat. So, and these are one of the best things you are going to grow. So the only way how to combat it, and especially uh, carrots and carrots and pea, they are very good in frost tolerance. So they are always in the first uh, rotation. As you can see, how I combat that disease is putting the turnip. And turnip is the only thing that grows in the ho frozen uh, this, this period and is not affected by the disease. So if the disease is even showing up, and sometimes it's showing up also in my fields, it, it is affecting this one uh, thing. If the next thing is not affected, the disease goes away. And so next time when the disease is kind of evolving would be here. And then again, no, no. So this is, for example, perfect match. And there are other things, as you can see, you can throw in the same peas and, and beans and, and also flax and all that. So that mixed bag is essential to avoid disease. And that's you need, that you need absolutely. Second thing, as you can see, I only now switch to biggest fields ever. Reason for that is quite simple. The fields to make and maintain are quite dif difficult. Uh, so I opt in to smaller fields. That gave me possibility to mix match more, right? So for example, if I made these four fields right away, once you have that yield for grain, you have limited time to process it or flax. And once the flax come in, when it spoils, it's gone, then you need to wait another period of time. So here, what I did is mixed, um, there, there used to be more flax, I just had too much of it. So I now probably, so what it gives more fields gives you different times when they are gathered, they're go <laughs> giving different, you see, there's flexibility for you. So this is also important because what you want is basically the, the flat, income for for all the things the roots the grain and the peas right so that's another tip about the field size and how to manage to have healthy mix of everything across different fields right third thing and we are going to the main points third thing is also essential is how to explain simple by explaining uh, let's take a look at grain. To get grain, these are the three things you can um, grow. Rye, buckwheat, or wheat. All of them, when they are gathered, that's basically grain that you need to make a mill or you can make a beer. Easy as that. But if you pay attention, this last rating is actually the main key ingredient how to survive in this harsh environment. If you look, Fertility dependence means 10 out of 10. If I have zero fertility, which I have, that means 
this will have minus 100% of yield. It basically will yield almost nothing. A little bit there will be bonus, I'll show you, but nothing. But instead, if I'm going with buckwheat and rye instead, you see this rating, or buckwheat even better, four. It means from total yield, if you have zero fertility, which you have, you will suffer minus 40% of the yield. So 60% stays. Sounds good? Yes. And this is, this is, this is true for all, all this. You will never see me growing a leak here because it also has 10, per, 10 out of 10 dependence. Um, cabbage, nine out of 10, no go. And wheat, they are really one of the best in terms of a crop yield, the top, top thing you see there, but you can't have that. And for example, why we are going with those at the top, they are great, because you see fertility dependence is six yeah, but crop field is also six. For example, if you see this one, pff, crop yield is also six, the top liner uh, and the bottom four. So this will suffer, the P will suffer less. The problem is beans are summer uh, cultures and peas are uh, for frost resistance, right? You always basically are looking at two numbers. What you need to plant at the start of the year in the cold times and when the hot times basically when it comes to frost resistance these three things is your uh, go-to and crop uh, this this carrot as you can see crop yield is eight so it's really really nice and fertility dependence is six so yeah you will see i'll show you all the numbers and Again, the first rule applies. You need to mix match, check the resistance, and go with the fields that has less possible fertility and dependence. And of course, for flax, there is no room for nothing. You have to have and, and plant nine out of 10. Eh, it's pretty harsh. You will get little yield, but it's not that bad. Last but not least, which is absolutely one of the important parts. If you pay attention, you see there is soil mixture beneath it. And for everything I just explained with different mix and match, with all the things you are avoiding to get, avoid fertility being zero, okay? You will end up, all the cultures I mentioned, the only thing that is not that great by growing is what it is it is peas even beans let me find a field where i'm growing both of them so i can better showcase yeah there is no field where i actually go in with both of them because i know they will catch that pesky disease all right fine by me let's find this this is perfect field every culture every time is totally different so basically there's there are some diseases that are affecting more of them more of them uh, but bear with me. Look at this this 10% bonus. At the start, let me pause so I'm not messing it up. When you start, you will have minus 20 soil bonus. That will give you a headache because you will grow nothing. And that's the problem. Mix or match whatever, there will be nothing. So you have to spend some clay. Every time you click, it's 10 clay it will require. My advice, two times two clay added and you can move by one of this block go one block two blocks three blocks and a half this is the perfect golden area why because once you click on the thing it shows what kind of soil mixture this uh, culture is requiring right look look what happens we have from minus 20 to plus 10 percent increase mm -hmm plus 10 percent even if it moved a little bit it's still in the green area plus 10 percent plus 10 percent and plus 10 percent the only thing where you see the soil mixture requires more on the that side right left left side you see for these what was the piece you have zero no negative but zero which is as i said absolutely golden must have.
So you will have to spend one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seventy uh, clay. But trust me, it is worthwhile. And overall, at the end, at the end, every single one of the numbers you can see if you mouse over here and you see, because we have zero percent fertility, we are losing five hundred seventy-nine of the yield. Just yeah, no, gone. But there are upsides. As we are having buckwheat in a rotation, that suppresses the weed. So weed, basically, I have no problems. I have 4%, 3%, it goes back when the buckwheat is um, grown. So you see, we have 40, uh, not 49 increased because we have amazing weed levels. Rocks are down, we also have 49%. And soil bonus, that's the mixture, we have plus 52, uh, 52 yields. So you see at the average, at the bottom, you see we could have 752. Positive factors are giving that much bonus, minus. Uh, and at the end, you see here from everything we could have, we are landing a little bit below the average, the, the, the yeah, average. The, Half, half of it, half. which sounds bad, but wait, but wait, look what happens. Okay, this is bad example. Yeah, this was really heavy dependent. Eh, not great, not terrible. Here we are growing quite a lot, 500 carrots. Ah, this is suffering a lot. Look at these beautiful peas, more than a half. I am able to grow if properly applied on absolutely zero fertility. And buckwheat, look at the buckwheat. <laughs> Come on, we are ending up with 700 buckwheat. And this is not the biggest fail. I am just, let me show you some numbers. Carrots, 800. Buckwheat, 1000. 1000 from 1500. So two thirds of the yield is still output. Sounds great. Yes, of course, you need a little bit more fields as I'm having there, but at the end, everything you can grow and it's perfectly fine. Yeah, well, this is not fine, but you have to have that mix other ways. Otherwise, you can't have all the time buckwheat. You will have the disease. The disease, by the way, when it progresses, it shows you at what percentage yield you're losing and what will be the maximum. Trust me, you don't want disease. Whenever you find a disease, you can easily... I, I can't show you because I don't have... Not a single disease on all of my fields. I can't be that great. Damn it. So yeah, mouse over, read what type of culture is affected and make sure next two, three uh, things you're growing on the field is not on that list. And it will be gone. It, it pops up constantly. It's not a big problem. So this is the key ingredient, right? Oh, damn it, I spent so much time on this, but this is essential. Because at the end, you will have granary full of grain. And I, I have no, so much I built another uh, windmill. Okay, but we are here for food. Let me explain you what not to do. The grain is not finished, not even close. I believe there is some logic behind it but hear me out because we are moving to the next tier that's windmill there's bakery no things there okay quickly about this arborist one of the tips says hey 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 you can grow apple even if there is no fertility there uh, no not a single thing grows with this thing oh i actually removed it the trees you planted, I planted many times, all the trees, they are just not giving anything. So, long story short, in this map, I don't know if it's a bug or what, but in current state, none of the, not a single fruit is gathered. At all. So, another no-go building in this map, like a forger. It is what it is. But, last but not least, well, actually, this last thing. <laughs> Uh, this barn is another thing. I absolutely love the cows and for many reasons. Uh, one of the first and I need to explain is this weird thing. You see fertility is here and it was zero here as well. 
you can use a fields to actually measure how much fertility is. This is high number. And the reason why it's high is actually because cows are using this particular area as a fodder. I have had used fodder, word fodder in, in, in English language, but this is how it's called in this uh, game. So, set grazing and yeah, it's fodder quality. Uh, so, yeah, the fields for cows, all right? So, you see currently, I think this farm is using it, yeah. It's only 28%. And this is some weird thing I'm just explaining so you understand how it works. Once you start the game, let me try some neutral field where it's not affected. If you mouse over, you see the crop field is still not zero, but 18%. Right here, right? And if you bring out a barn over this area, it's approximately the same. So the quality for crops and for cows are at the start same. What happens? When you make a fodder field over this area, the fodder quality drops. Basically, cow eats the grass and it stays lower. But weird thing is, well, it's quite amazing, fertility for crops rises. You see, I am use, overusing this one spot and we have fertility 85%, which at the point got me thinking, oh my God, make field there, make it fertile as hell in unfertile land, then just switch and use the fields, right? Make field on it. And then the realization hits, oh my God, that field will be fertile. That's one. But another thing, you can grow a clover. This clover, like from the real life, is something that cows eat. So you can make a clover which will grow specifically for cows and cows will have the fodder quality increased. No, it's not working. It's not working. I think it's not done yet. But the thing, once you plant a field like this, what happens is, yes, that crop field will be fertile for... You need to make the field, then, uh, then you need to remove the rocks, then you need to adjust the soil mixture. Approximately one or two years will be spent. All the time, what happens, this fertility, it goes down all the time drastically. So basically, whenever I have that increased field, it will go down all the, by itself. Once the field is finally ready to be grown things on it, you will have some two, three years tops where you will have good yield. Afterward, it's zero back to zero, so you need to get your cows back. If you choose to plant clover and try to use um, cows fodder on it, what happens is something like this. It basically gives you quality zero. So you it doesn't work like that. The mechanics is there, but it's not fully implemented or it's absolutely dumb. As because normally I would say it's okay to have a field there as long as you as, um, grow clover on it and then you let cows eat that clover because clover can't be gathered it's not there it's basically uh, letting the field rest that's another term in agriculture that's i know too much things from real life okay so it doesn't work like that this i'm explaining all this because first instinct when you see this uh quality is like oh, i need to make field on it you will end up losing time uh clay the fodder, the quality, everything is going to ruin here. And the thing is, there, uh, the fodder quality does not improve. It just improves if you remove cows. So if you have a lot of cows and a lot of work power and a lot of, I don't know, how much barns you need to have to move, shuffle those uh, around, because the thing, the main thing is this fodder quality so far does not increase by anything 
and normally uh, I started it, it was approximately 30, like 29, this is the original quality, it never goes above. What it means, once you place cows on it, it takes one, two years rotation by bringing it down once you need to remove those cows. Then it takes one or two years to recover. So in those two years, there is no way you can make fertility for crops high enough from zero. And then it, it's just not sustainable. You can't have it. Uh, my current logic, how, how I see it, and I tested it out and then tested and failed so many times. So you don't have to, is basically when my fodder quality drops, it shows I have unhealthy thing. What I do, I set on the other side, you see, this is my fodder and let, let this part rest. Then after two years, I'm switching back. And that's how I do. There is no time or energy or whatnot to fill any of those two years with crop field. And that is true also for this one piece where I found uh, this quality originally is, as you can see, 41%, a little bit lighter. And for cows, actually, this is like huge. This is, you see, 60. 70% I am using this for absolutely best cows, large barn. There is no time to mix in crops. So don't do that, all right? This all mumble jumble, just so you don't the same mistake I did and I end up ruining all your fields and time and everything, okay? But I still love cows because one thing, you have to set the uh, size for your uh, herd normally you originally starts at 13 somehow once you reach the maximum i don't know why but game did not start immediately butcher it so you have to select and, and confirm again and again until you see that happening in the winter time when there's new new cow burn uh old cow basically is butchered you need to see here one of the guys butchering it then you know okay fine it will work from now on it will and should remain fine another thing whenever you divide herd send over herd or or whatnot I, as you can see i i have one barn there another here another here and you guessed it right two more barns here because i just love animals so Whenever you do any mixture, what happens is currently milking is turning off. Pay attention here and just make sure it is enabled. Why? Because you make milk and milk is best, right? It is whole through the whole year. Basically, it uses a little bit grain or, or root vegetables through the winter, which is not that much if you look this this store size is depending on how many cows you have set so the more cows you have the more you will store but 200 just 200 for having this milk coming in through the whole year and then you see two cows are or four cows are born 1000 meat that is four hunter hunters as minimum four hunters I have belt, I have tallow, and those milks, uh, those cows are keep giving me milk. So this is absolutely gold mine. Only thing you need to make sure there is a little bit grain or root vegetables to feed them through the winter. Another thing, as I mentioned, those fodder quality, you can't do anything with that so far in the game. Only thing is using how much and you can measure it, you can measure. You see, it's all in the same color, which actually is not true. You see, the game is as stupid as it looks. Only 50% and above changes color. So 49% and 0% has exactly the same color. So I'm showing you here. You see, we have fodder quality here, zero, it's the same color as here, it's 34%. And 34 is fine. It, it lasts at least two, three years. So you need to bring up this particular building. This is the only way how you can measure how good cows will live on this land. 
and just scroll around and, and, and move around. You, for example, you see this field here and here. Okay, this is 6%, it's poor choice, but here was 28. Another thing I noticed, if you pay close attention, you see there is no grass, but that's a little bit too vague to actually notice because you see it's a bit more greenish, but don't trust that. I'd say use proper tools, which is, as we all now know, scanning with barn in your hand. That's how actually um, <clears throat> farmers do it in real life as well. They they take in a hand barn and then just scroll around and like, oh, yep, 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 bing, 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 somewhere here. 21%, a little bit less, we need some higher. 22, ah, we'll do, we'll do, right? And then you make barn there. Don't make on the land, right next to it, so you can use fodder field. Rest of that, it's easy. As soon as you hit third level, that's the last building I'm going to talk about, is cheesemaker. The only thing it does, it takes milk, turns into cheese, cheese stays longer. Boom, profit, perfect. This preservation building, in my opinion, not worth it. Just not worth it. I haven't built one, I'm not going to, because it takes too much effort. And look what kind of things you can preserve. We have not a single fruit coming in, only the ones you purchase. No berries coming in, so only few roots. You're going to preserve, they're fine. They are absolutely fine. And that concludes my video. With all those things taken in consideration, you absolutely can now survive this harsh environment. And whenever you're playing on any other map, you have forger, you have blueberries, you have gathering things, you can grow apples. That's like walk in a park. Anyone can do that. And you, pff, easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? All right. We'll meet in other videos if you like this one. Make that like so like button so I know. And if you have any questions, of course, in the comment section, I will set up the timestamps so you can easily browse around and see what topics I'm talking about in what timeline. And one or two more videos coming up for other aspects of hard difficulty, which as you imagine, not having herbs, not having uh, possibilities to make baskets not having a lot of things right here. Eh, yeah, there are some other challenges you need to fight. All right, but that's for another video. We'll meet in that one. Cheers.